What's up guys? Sio Fantasia here with another Allegro tutorial. Uh, in this video, I want to cover more on theory. That is, I want to cover a video game programming theory topic more than just, just Allegro tutorial programming. Um, in this video, I wanted to take the time out to explain uh, one of the most important aspects of video game programming in my opinion that I think there is and that is the game loop. Um, but before I go into deep explanation of the game loop before what I've been doing is I've been writing some code and showing you exactly what the code does and that's good but what I wanted to do is I wanted to take you into a deeper understanding of the video game. Um, first of all there are many different types I mean there are so many different genres so many different subgenres um, there's action platform RPG shooters adventure racing and fighting and that's only just to name a few there are so many subgenres that it all, every game now it almost seems different but despite their differences they all sort of operate the same way and that's why what I'm going to explain to you in this video um, before I explain game loops um, in a simple sense a game a video game is or electronic one is just nothing more than a big giant electronic flip book and you're sitting there you play you're playing and you know you press a button the game reacts almost instantaneously and I say almost because you think that it's instantaneous. It looks instantaneous because we don't notice the small, subtle changes in um, what's happening on the, with the machine, whether it be a PC or a console. But at at the minuscule level, what's happening is that there the game code is running, and when you press a button, the code comes to the point where it says, "Hey, computer, read the input." and when it finds that you have the button pressed then it does something based on that if I were to slow down the game to one frame per second you would see exactly what I was talking about so I explained before that the, it's nothing more than a giant electronic flipbook what it is is that at the core of every game or at least some of them at least two dimensional ones anyway is the game loop the game loop is an iterative game structure in code which means that it reiterates the same section of code over and over and over and over again until a certain condition is matched and then after which the game loop terminates and then it continues onward with the uh, next section of the game and the game loop can be essentially uh, divided into two main parts and um, that is logic and rendering and when I when I'm explaining all of this what, what I mean to say is that all uh, game loop structures you can look at one person's game loop uh, code and another and they can be completely different in work and what that is to say is that there is no way, one way to program a game loop. It's anything that you want. It's um, when I'm when I'm showing you this. What, what I wanted to emphasize is that this is just my method, and it's not the only method. You can come up with something better that works for you, something that works the same, and it's easier for you to manipulate, control, and maintain. And that's the art of programming. So. Um, the game loop, as I said, is composed of logic and drawing. Now, logic is the section of the game loop that takes care of the thinking. That's the brains of the game. It's the the calculation entity. It, it takes care of calculations. It's responsible for numerical manipulation. It's responsible for physics. It's responsible for collision detection. Um, all of the input of the game. It senses uh, changes in position, changes in time, and it's pretty much just the brain 
of the game. Um, and then you have the rendering, which is responsible for drawing. It's responsible for clearing the screen. And they kind of work together. And what's going on at the code level is that the game, uh, the game loop is reiterating at such a fast rate that it looks almost like it's a continuous uh, phenomenon, like it just never stops. It never stops, but it's actually running so fast that it looks almost like one thing. It's almost like, uh, like I explained to you, like the flipbook concept. When you take a flipbook and you flip it at a constant, you know, high speed, it looks like the picture is moving. But um, in essence, they're nothing more than just pages, and the pages correspond to the different frames of a game. So every uh, iteration of logic to drawing is called a frame, and what that is is that the game is showing you what um, what the logic is is interpreting. So is the, so in in a sense, what you're seeing is a solid. Um, instantiation of the numerical data. It's almost like um, like you're taking something abstract and making it concrete um, in, in a sense. But uh, they do work together and it's simply just an amazing thing. So in our example our game loop is our while loop. Its terminating condition is the escape key. So until we press the escape key, it's going to do this, uh, the logic part, which is the uh, key input, and it's going to execute the drawing over and over again. And so, um, like I said, this is the logic part because input is part of the logic, and, um, and drawing and blitting and clearing the color is part of the drawing. So as you can see here what's happening is if we slow this down way down way down what's what's happening is that when it comes around to this part of the code it's executing it at that time if at this time your finger is striking the left key the left arrow key then it's going to do exactly what this is right here x minus equals five or it subtracts five from the current x value same thing for the other right up and down and what what's strange but true about this is that some ki because the way this is ordered um, this reads the left and right keys you know before the up and down so if um, for example you press left before you press up it's going to read left and not up so what I mean to say is if at this time in the code you're pressing the up key and not left it's not going to read it because it's not that time see it, it takes turns but it takes turns very fast so that's why it looks like it's doing everything instantaneously you see so that's 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 essentially what the game loop is what's, hap what's happening is the order here essentially doesn't matter it, for example in this small example it doesn't matter if I were to put the drawing before the logic it would work the same almost exactly the same. Um, the only subtle difference is that it's drawing before it's thinking but it's still doing the same two things over and over again. Now see in larger game loops um, order is going to matter and that's going to be the intention of the Allegro uh, tutorial series. Is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through step by step with you and um, we're going to do things like uh, collision detection, um, you know projectile motion uh, regulating the time so your game works at the same speed at all on all computers we're gonna do things like object construction deconstruction sound um, more advanced key input we're gonna um, make some whole game examples and at some point I'd like to make uh, go through and code whole games so that you can understand um, the concepts and the techniques like I said before, um, programming is much more you learn the elementary uh, rudimentary routines and then you apply them any way you want. 
and so my job is just to show you the rudimentary things so that you can go out and uh, make your own games as you please with the tools that I've given you so that's pretty much what the game loop is and that is my attention for showing you because all future videos will be based on or in the game loop um, things more or less are going to go in the game loop and outside of the brackets where we have the initialization and the termination part of the code um, the reason that the initialization isn't part of the game loop is because you don't want to go out and allocate space over and over again that's just gonna waste memory and um, same thing for here you're just gonna go out and waste memory that's not what you want to use the same data over and over again you don't want to make the new data uh, multiple times so and what happens is when you press escape it's gonna jump down to this portion out of the loop out of the brackets and it's gonna destroy the memory that you allocated and um, all the character memory and things so that's essentially what I wanted to cover was the game loop and um, later on our examples will get more and more complicated so um, that's that's pretty much it for this video um, in the next video what I wanted to cover was game loop speed and how to regulate it and set up a timing system and um, so that's gonna be great so make sure you watch my next video also um, I am using code blocks so as I said in my previous tutorials if you haven't watched the other code blocks installation tutorials you should do so before watching future tutorials but um, if you have any questions at any time just uh, PM me or email me or whatever and I'll try to get back with you as soon as possible Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, Till next time, this is Sayo Fantasia. See ya.